Discover hope and healing from the other side. Welcome to Messages of Hope with Suzanne Giesman. Listen, they're all around you, close as a thought or a memory. Messages of Hope. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. It's already March, first Thursday of the month. That means it's Ask Suzanne and Sanaya Day. And I see the lines are lighted up with callers, every line filled. I think that's a first as we start the show. So thank you, everybody. And please be patient. And we'll try to get to as many of you as possible. But first, I just have to express my gratitude to spirit. I did a reading yesterday for a woman who's been carrying pain around since the late 80s over a loved one's loss. And in 20 minutes, healing took place. She said that she feels lighter than she has in as long as she can remember. And that came from the evidence that her loved one is still with her. And for me, it was a beautiful, beautiful session because I learned some things and broke through some barriers, some self-imposed barriers in what I thought was possible. So gifts all around. And I hope that you too, in your connection with spirit are constantly recognizing that there's no limit to the way we can connect with spirit and that they're always here to help us, our loved ones across the veil, our team of angels, the archangels. We are part of this community with them and we just have to acknowledge that and ask for their help and they will uh, not literally, but figuratively bend over backwards to help us. So I'm calling on my team of guides, Sanaya's help today to answer your questions because I sure don't have all the answers, but I love knowing that they are here to help me with whatever comes up. And we just affirm that the greatest good happened today and the questions that are asked that they help everyone as we address them. So I'm just gonna go right down the line here. I have the engineers panel in front of me and I can see that Drew is the first one in the queue, that rhymes. Drew, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much, Suzanne. You are absolutely one of my favorite people and authors. I'm delighted you took my call. Well, I just can't wait to chat with you. You have this burst of energy that you just brought to kick off the show. So thank you already. <laughs> well, the question that I have, I believe, is probably the most important question I've ever asked anyone in my life. Oh, my. And, and this is the question for Sanaya. Okay. I, I have read another author who's one of my favorite authors along with you. And he writes books about his astral travels with his guide, Albert, where he meets infamous souls on the spirit side. Okay. In his last book, he talked about being privy to the initial stages of a conversation between Jesus, Moses, and Muhammad as they were discussing their return to earth to help us as walk-ins. Since there is nothing in the world that I'd love to experience more, could Sanaya please tell me if this is true and within how many years it will happen? Well, it's so, oh, they're taking my breath away here. So I have to see what that's all about. But what I'm seeing is in the Navy, we have a term called wave off. And a wave off means is when an aircraft is about to land and it's like a don't go there aircraft and they get waved off with the crossed arms and it's like go around again. So the wave off is for me to not go there, number one, because it has to go through my filters. And as I hear that, I think, well, how could I know the answer to that one? They say it is absolutely that author's truth and understand that everything goes through and any author's filters. So I'll answer this. What they're saying right now is, with, oh, I get it. They say the wave off is for me not to not claim absolute truth one way or another, that truth is relative, that experiences are all experienced in this realm as story. And we call stories true when they are our experience. Isn't that interesting? It's true, don't we? 
Well, it happened to me, so it's true. I say that with every reading I do, and I say this reading is true, and it absolutely is true. So they say, yes, I'm getting a big thumbs up with this. To that author, it was true, but to others, it might not be truth. They say that there is learning to be had from this and that you may measure truth in your own heart and make the story your own. So that's an interesting answer. They say all stories are metaphors, even the Garden of Eden story is true in its own way for the truths that it carries. So what you're being advised to do is go back to that story and see is what is the basic message that it's trying to bring to us. And it may not be literally true, but carry messages about the greater master's return to us to help us all, but perhaps not exactly as it came through in that author's experience. Wow, oh. how's that? Oh my goodness. That's very, very interesting. I, I have to say that I have hoped in my heart this was so true because there's nothing I'd rather live through than to experience Jesus coming back and, and helping us. Well, let me tell you from my morning meditations and many others I've spoke with, he's already here. He didn't go anywhere, but perhaps not in physical form, but we're not completely in physical form either. So we can all learn from any of the masters at any time. This is something that we need to learn that it's uh, any being who has ever existed is available to us in expanded states of awareness as we expand our own belief system that that's possible, we have experiences that are very true to us. The bottom line is, how does it help your soul evolve? Is it helpful? Is it healing? And so don't wait for some human waking consciousness experience when you can have an actual, true, real experience now with any of your beloved teachers in expanded states of consciousness. Oh, that's wonderful. That's so beautiful. I, I just cannot believe the vibrations that I'm feeling in my body right now as you say those words. Very good. That well, is, that's your truth meter, right? <laughs> yes. Excellent. It is. All right. Thank well, thank you for that. And you, you got me into trusting right off the bat and getting out of my human side that says, oh my God, what's the answer? But the answers are are flowing. So thank you, Drew. And I put your name in our little slip of paper for the drawing I do every time. So stand by and listen. I'm going to have to get you off the line, but you can listen on your, on your computer or your phone. And uh, we'll call a name at the end for who wins one of my online courses, which will help you connect to the masters. All right. Oh, that would be fantastic. Thank All you right. so much. Well, you know what? I just changed my mind. You reach out to my assistant, Bev, because I'm not going to, uh, they're, we're not going to pull the one, pull the card. I'm going to gift you with my making the connection course so that you can learn how to connect with Jesus and your own loved ones who have passed yourself. Okay. Oh my gosh. Bless you, Suzanne. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you just you. tell her, you just tell her I said that and everybody who's listening is my witness. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right. I feel like Santa thank Claus. You. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, that was wonderful. Let's move on to Betty. You're on the Messages of Hope show. Welcome. Hi, Suzanne. Thank you so much for taking my call. I am just so, so excited to be able to um, speak with you. Well, thank you. I, I, I still kind of giggle inside when people say that, and I get it, but I'm just me. <laughs> oh. Well, I've got a question regarding um, meditation. So for years, I've always been very interested in mediumship and um, spirit guides, and I've gone to mediums and psychic readings, and I've actually even experienced signs that I believe that are from my loved ones. And um, I have a hard time with meditation. Since I've found you, I've really been conscious of creating a meditative practice um, consistent every day. However, hey, that's when I go to start. meditate, 
when I go to meditate, though, I have a very active brain, I, the kind of a monkey brain. I have a lot of chatter going on. I'll, and so it's hard to be in that um, space. I can never get past about 10 minutes. Um, but in that 10 minutes, it's always this, this chattering. And I feel like that is what is my, um, the hindrance of not being able to connect with loved ones and um, spirits and spirit guides for maybe some guidance in my life of decisions that I want to make for career or whatever. Um, how do you get past that? Okay. I will meditate and I will get hot flashes. Then I'll get an itch on my back and then I'll start yawning and then I'll, you know. And you get distracted. I have to tell you, hopefully this will make everybody feel good. You are not alone. It's the number one complaint that I hear from people. I can't quiet my mind. And we seem to think that meditation has to be completely silent. And it is impossible to stop our normal thoughts from arising. The point is to notice when the thoughts are your conditioned thoughts that go round and round and your to-do list and noticing things that are popping up around you. And the difference between when spirit puts a thought into your awareness and that arises and you definitely want to notice that. And this is the point of meditation, creating space and openness so that when your loved ones across the veil speak, you hear it. And they may not always speak right when you're meditating. It could come later in the day. So that meditation is what I call the training ground for creating that aware presence. So are you familiar, Betty, with my sip of the divine practice? Yep, I've tried that a couple of times. I even bought your Hemi, one of your Hemisync meditations. Right, the training ground, I hope, because that's a good one for this yes, particular that's issue. I, I got. So yes, let's not. Let me just briefly tell everybody that the the sip of the divine video on YouTube. Just look up Suzanne Giesman sip S I P. That stands for sit in peace of the divine. Is really good for getting started because it's only three minutes and it's to train you to focus. So this is the challenge that you're having, Betty. It's the lack of focus. It's not the thoughts that come up. You cannot stop those. So I would like you to set the intention to focus on your thoughts. Play a game with yourself and watch the thoughts arise. Instead of resisting them and trying to be quiet, silent, which is impossible, you say, I'm going to focus on my thoughts. So here comes one, you notice it and you say, oh, that's mine. And you let it go. And then you go back to what I call blank slate. And here comes your to-do list. Oh, I, I noticed that to-do list. That's not from my loved one or a guide. I let it go. And you will start to become the greatest observer of your thoughts thoughts. And this is an outstanding practice. I hope that you feel a little excited as I bring this up. Yes, yes, I do. And I'm, I, I've been hesitant to, I want to um, sign up for one of your uh, mediumship classes, online classes, but I've been hesitant because I haven't, I feel like I'm trying to master this meditation. And that's, and I, I feel I'm trying to perfect but, it. And I yeah. And, and I can tell, I understand that I, I'm, I used to be a perfectionist too, and I'm slowly letting go of that. I just found a wonderful tool that might help you. I just did a video about it. The video is called Healing in Your Hands Now, because I was gifted this little pair of speakers. I don't have them right now. They're right across the room from me, that you push the button, one in each hand, and they play random tones, beautiful ethereal notes always random for exactly three minutes. And they call it yoga for the mind. It's the perfect training tool because the whole point is focus on the tones. And in fact, if you watch that video, I even offer a discount. I don't get anything for helping people buy these. I just think they're such a valuable tool, but it's really the same practice. You either focus on these tones or you can literally focus on your thoughts, like I said. And you may get to the point where you say, well, what's the point of this? Focus. You could focus on your big toe for three minutes, but it's, it seems that your challenge is you think the thoughts are the enemy and they're not. They're just clouds that pass through the sky. 
So use them as a tool to help train you to notice them, let them go. Notice them, let them go. All right? Okay, thank you so much. I and 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 with the um that those you were just talking about that video healing in your hands. I'll just yes. have to share with you. I literally watched your video this morning. <laughs> no surprise. <laughs> All right. So I guess I'm um meant to buy those. <laughs> Thank you so well, much. Well, I, I know they'll help you, but just the practice that doesn't cost anything at all that I mentioned earlier will also be extremely helpful to you to not resist them, to just use them to help you. Thank you so much. All right. You're welcome. Thanks, Betty. All right. We are rolling right along here. And I see that our next caller, I love interacting with all of you, is Patricia. Welcome to the show. Let me put your name on a little drawing piece here hey there thank Hi. you hello namaste namaste yes um i can't believe i'm on this phone call this is amazing um i know that all these questions that i have i could just find them if i silent myself because we're all that there is but some three questions for you the first one um Suzanne and your splendid team, can you tell me about the 3 a.m. hour, what the significance is, and what can we do if we're prompted to this hour on Earth? Did you happen to send your questions in in advance? Because I have this printed <laughs> out of me. Did you? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Well, good. I, I so much better to answer it in person than reading it. The 3 a.m. hour is so common that people wake up then and... Let me ask the guides because I know what I think is the answer. And they're saying, yes. Who did I take my breath away? They, they say, yes, go with this answer. It is because you are in the perfect state of mind at that time, the perfect mm -hmm. state of awareness to attune to spirit and their guidance and to see spirits if that is meant to happen at that time. You've been, most people have been asleep just long enough that they go they've dropped away the worries of the day. They're very relaxed and they naturally awaken in this perfect state right about that hour. So it's why three o'clock around the world, wherever it is at that time, most people have been asleep about the same amount of time. And we wake up and sometimes go right back to sleep, but other times, oh my goodness. Oh, wow. They just said something I'll add in a minute. Uh, I get some of my best guidance in the middle of the night, which is why I keep a pad of paper and pen nearby, much to my husband's chagrin. Ty knows not to talk to me when I start scratching on paper in the middle of the night. But what they also said, it's one of the reasons that many people cross the veil at 3 a.m. Because the ah. soul is just, it's just an energy thing and it's easier. So that's interesting. Oh, okay. okay. I know you had several questions, but we have a lot of people waiting. So how about one more? Okay. Um, so I was told that I have had strong spiritual guidance recently, and I was wondering, wouldn't this be the case for everyone? Wouldn't it be the case for everyone that we all have strong spiritual guidance? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the, our guides... <laughs> Trust me, everybody, our guides are just waiting to help us, but so few actually ask directly, oh, my guide or my loved one, tell me what I need to know right now. And then they're, you've just opened the gates and they're ready to help you. Now, they're not going to help you with something that's a major life lesson that you need to learn on your own, but they're, that's, what they're call, that's why they're called guides. They're here to guide you, but just like a parent will let their child stumble as it learns to walk until they reach up and say, help me. Then they'll step in. The guides can't step in until you ask. So the strong guidance is waiting for everyone. We have to be willing to receive it and willing to ask. All right. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you for calling, Patricia. Yeah, take care. All right. I love that Patricia started by saying namaste. I remember my very first book I wrote was Conquer Your Cravings. And I went to a health and wellness expo to share that book. And there were all these people around saying namaste to each other. 
And I had no idea what it meant. I was still on active duty in the Navy. This was 1997. So namaste, what is that? And now we say it all the time. And, and well, let's just review it for those of you who don't know and see if you feel the feeling. My guides want me to share it with you, what namaste means. It is, I honor the place in you that is of love, of peace, of truth, and of light. When you are in that place in you, which to me is the soul, and I am in that place as me, the soul, we are one. So namaste is a soul to soul greeting. It acknowledges that we're human, but it's sharing it's not really an, I've got a secret. It's more of, oh my gosh, we get it. I can't wait till everyone else gets it too. So namaste, everybody. Thank you, Patricia, for allowing me to bring that up. We're going to move on. We still have five minutes till the break. It's going quickly. Deb is our next guest. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I have a brother, Larry, that passed away in 2010 of a stroke, and his daughter, Emily, was diagnosed with mouth cancer a few months ago, and she went into the hospital and had surgery in December and had a portion of her tongue removed, some lymph nodes taken out of her neck, and they think they got 70% of the cancer, but the rest of it is in her nerves, and they don't know if they can get the rest of it, but my question is, and I, I have a friend who is also a psychic medium, and she has told me over the last two years that she thinks I have some type of healing capabilities. Um, and I wondered what I can do to help her, to help heal, if that's possible, and what your guides may give me some input and some comfort in that. And How do you feel about your ability to heal energetically i i really feel that i do i think it's a gift and i i, I know you know how you just know i just That's know it. i have it right and this is the part you left out but you must embrace that not just take it because somebody else said you had that ability it's wonderful that the other saw it in you but now that you recognize it there is no limit to how you can harness that all of us have the ability to heal, just as all of us have the ability to connect soul to soul as mediums do, but not everybody's called to be a medium or a healer. But you know this and you have this family member, you have that heart connection. There's no reason why you can't use what you know in your heart is an innate gift to do your best to heal her. I would ask her permission to work with her. I would Ask your guides to show you what modality is going to be the best one for you to use. And then absolutely turn it over to spirit, to the universe and trust, understand. I just talked about this in an interview I did with Janneke from Norway earlier today, that healing takes place on multiple levels. And so Perhaps there may or may not be a physical healing, but there could be an emotional one or a spiritual one. Just trust that the universe will work through you, source, God, whatever you want to call this healing energy, this intelligence will work through you and needs often your vessel to act as that conduit for the healing energy to be received by your niece. So I say go for it. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Does Sanaya have anything to add to that by any chance? Well, trust me that that came from Sanaya and their conduit. Let's see. Oh. They say, without a doubt, you are more powerful than you know, that those words apply to all of us, that you are given hands and a voice to use as God's tools and to understand that you never work alone for it is impossible when working energetically to be alone. We're all connected. So any trained healer will tell you that any healings they've done 
are not from them, that they are just the vessel. And this will be part of any training you do. But even without training, our thoughts, our good intentions from the heart, they make a difference. So in that way, all of us are healers. Okay. Well, thank you, Susan. That's beautiful. You're so welcome, Deb. And we all just surround you and your family and your niece with so much love and know that her father is absolutely looking over her and talk to him as you work. And I'm sure that he'll put some insights into your mind as well. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. You take care. Thank you for calling. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So we only have 30 seconds until the break, not enough time to take another caller. So I'll just tell you, I'm so excited about my monthly connection webinar that's coming up this Tuesday, March 8th. If, you, if you're listening to this in the archives and you missed it, don't worry, all of my monthly connection webinars are in the archives of my own website, but I'm gonna be channeling my guides live in that one for the first time ever as part of a healing session that we're all going to do together plus lots of other evidence from the greater reality, lots of teaching. This one's going to be really special. You can find a button to sign up right at the top of my homepage, SuzanneGiesman.com, right under the banner, the monthly connection. We're going to a break, and I'll see you back here real soon. You're listening to Messages of Hope with Suzanne Giesman. Yeah, I was just talking with our sound engineer, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. We love him keeping everybody on track here with the shows and he is in Kansas and saying that they had record-breaking heat 89 degrees and yet they're going to have a snowstorm in, in a few days and the weather just goes up and down up and down and I said well that is life isn't it I mean we think it's going to go one way and it goes the other way and when we can learn to flow with it that's when we find peace I'm going to teach you all a tool right now that I teach in my Let Your Spirit Soar workshop, and it's how you downgrade your demands to preferences. And let's say, for example, you have a, you've planned an outdoor activity tomorrow, and all of a sudden we get a forecast for snow, and you get all bent out of shape. Well, that's the human way, because we're demanding that the weather go our way. And isn't that silly? So you downgrade that demand to a preference and you say, I would prefer we have nice weather, but I have no control over it. And can you feel the peace in that? So anytime you find yourself bent out of shape or upset about something, notice it's because you think it should go one way and we can't control life. And so just say, I would prefer and fill in the blank and you just instantly drop into this place of peace. So a little bit of help I, from the spirit world on that one, some good teaching that I got a long time ago from them, and it has changed my life. I remember walking into the kitchen, and there's Ty with his back to me, and he turns around with a bottle of wine in his hand, and he looks at me with this little grin, and he says, I would prefer that that cork had not just broken off in this bottle. And I said, well, how about that? You're trainable. <laughs> All right, our next caller, Maria, I think you've been waiting the longest. Welcome to the show. Um, thank you, Suzanne. Um, uh, lots of love to you and Sanaya for all that you, you. do. Um, my question is about soul contracts. Um, recently, a psychic medium had told me that my mother, who's 74 years old, has a soul contract with this elderly woman that she has taken into her home and is caring for 24-7, sometimes to her own physical and financial detriment. Um, and my question is, if my mom has a soul contract uh, with this woman, and but it's not helping her in this lifetime, can she break that soul contract and how would she do it? My, I was just gonna tell you from my human answer without contacting Sanaya. So let me talk from myself first, then we'll check with Sanaya. But I have a challenge with soul contracts and that's because of the language. We as humans sign contracts, we say they're binding, you can't break them, they're like vows. And yet, if something is harmful to you, why would you keep doing that? And certainly not because somebody else told you there's a contract, right? 
Right. So let me ask the team about this. Okay. They, and I just got my lip twitch there. And they say that <laughs> they prefer the word agreement and that all relationships happen at the soul level as well. And there is an agreement to help each other with our soul's growth. And often painful situations lead to our greatest soul's growth, but that doesn't mean we have to stay in them. So that woman may have come into your mom's life at a soul level. That woman's soul said, I'm going to come in your life and I'm going to push your buttons. And now you're going to face some choices. How will you deal with that? With anger and frustration or with love and by going to your heart and making the right choices. See, it doesn't mean that because she came into your life, you now are stuck with her forever. It's an opportunity to tune into the soul and respond with love and even if that woman goes out of her life, that other one will likely have learned from this as well. So again, the guides are reiterating, they are agreements, they're not set in stone. Light, the wild card in life is free will choice. Okay, so if she chooses, she decides it's not for her health anymore for my mom to continue to do this, she's not missing out on a spiritual lesson by choosing not to do it what i see is the guides are showing me hands coming together so the spiritual lesson was the two of them coming together as they have and now what does she choose how does she choose to honor herself all right i got that thank you so much suzanne and Sonata. awesome you're welcome i love that that you came on maria because just the other day in a reading i brought through a woman's grandmother and she actually gave me her name maria I don't always get the names accurately, but I heard it. It was, she was a little old Italian lady. And I thought, oh, this is just so <laughs> obvious that it's Maria. And I almost didn't want to say it, but it was obvious because that is her name. So nice talking with you. <laughs> I love you. Suzanne. You take Bye. care. Bye-bye. And our next guest is Robin. Robin, you're on the air and welcome. Hi, Suzanne. It's so wonderful to talk to you. I'm so grateful for everything that you do. I've been uh, reading everything that you've written and listening to everything that you're saying for 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 a long time. So maybe I'm putting you to sleep at night. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> and, and, and my question was, um, whenever I, I think about spirituality and I listen to, you know, all these podcasts and I read your books and I listen to your stories and whenever I think about spirituality especially my own I I spend so much time crying and I'm just worried that worried that it's my human side overcome with you know all the, with the sadness because of what I'm missing and what I've lost or or is it my or is it my true self and my heart feeling my disconnection. I know what the answer is. What do you really know already is the answer? Well, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, in my heart, I, I truly want to believe in my heart that it's the right thing, but I worry about wallowing in my grief. I love that you answered, I truly want in my heart. So you're going to the heart. And that is the one place that will lead you to the right answers. And your heart knows that you're on the right path. So the what you're feeling with the crying, it isn't what I'm getting as I tune in here is a mixture of your soul saying, I'm so happy that we're now coming to know and remember who we are as souls and there is a little bit of grief there from the human side intermingling but it's really funny if you notice sometimes when we laugh really hard it's the exact same feeling in the body as crying really hard have you ever noticed that yeah yeah, yeah. i i was really laughing the other day and I thought my gosh the way the gut clenches and your whole body shakes and the, this pressure wells up that's the same as when we cry so no wonder it's hard to distinguish between the tears that come up when you're listening or reading things that are 
speaking to your heart. But just know that crying is not necessarily a bad thing. And in your case, it's a bittersweet, natural reaction to this sense of connection with truth that has always been here, but is being allowed to come to the surface. But at the same time, as that truth comes to the surface, it's moving energy that might have been stuck. And you're feeling that as well. So just flow with the energy, know that all is well, send love to yourself and just keep doing what you're doing. Yes, because I, I, I can't stop doing what I'm doing. So if it's, if it's doing a bad thing for me, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to keep on doing it anyway. Uh, it's, I mean, yeah. what, what's bad about it? You're, you're, you're reading about love and connection and how we're all part of all that is, uh, if anything is ever harmful, you'll know, and then you'll know not to do it. But this is a beautiful journey we're all on. And I love this community of kindred souls. Okay. All right. Thank no you. Worries. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome, okay. Robin. Thanks for calling in. Okay. All Bye -bye. right. Bye-bye. Bincy, there is a very cool name. You are on the air. Hi, Suzanne. Can you hear Hi. me? I can. Tell me about your name. Oh, my goodness. It's actually my middle name. Uh, my first name is Philomena, which is my grandma's name. And my mom made up my middle name, Dincy. That's the name I go by. Okay. Well, that's very cool. It's, it's sweet. I like it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So I have a question for you. And I feel kind of bad asking it, I guess. So I know that we're all like Matilda or... Um, I forgot the uh, the uh, the lady you interviewed and had a book, Droplets of God. I know we're all droplets of God, and the purpose of our being is God expressing himself through each of us to, I guess, um, realize or this creative expression of, of himself so he can uh, express himself in different ways and feel things that he cannot through our free will is how I'm summarizing what I think, why he created all of all of creation and so i guess i feel like isn't that selfish in some sense for god to want to feel all these things even though it might cause us so much pain but i know in the end we move on from this pain and move on to better levels of love and in the end we go back to god but in doing so in us experiencing this pain it kind of feels selfish so i don't know how to rectify that i would recommend you Okay, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna give you a free copy of my personal mediumship plus course. So write to Bev on my contact me page and tell her that I told you on the radio show, you can have access to personal mediumship plus because I really dig into this then. And the fact that you're referring to God as he and creating us as separate is just a different way of understanding who we are than the latest understanding I have from the guides and from personal experience, because what you're doing and talking about God as he is called anthropomorphizing and turning God into a person. When you can come to understand that God changed the name and call it source, divine intelligence, whatever you want to call it, the word God can be a bit limiting. This divine intelligence absolutely is real and exists, but it's so much more than a limited person who creates us for an experience. What if the source from which all of us arise is simply this, this light that needs to reflect upon something to, to be able to experience its brightness and its shininess? And so it just arises as billions and billions of different forms through which this light can reflect itself and have the fullness of all experience, both shining and darkness. That's more of how I see ourselves. And so that all of the experiences we get into are for the fullness of it. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it makes sense. I guess it, yeah, it absolutely makes sense. I, I think I'm thinking too much of it from a human level. Yeah. of the pain and suffering, even though I know we go beyond this and there's so much more. I guess I'm just thinking too much about this earth. That's all. 
Yeah, we could go really deep and I and I go a little a lot deeper in my personal mediumship plus course. That's the plus part. Personal mediumship the course is all about uh, connecting with your own loved ones across the veil, personal mediumship and your guides and angels. But the plus is let's understand how and why this is possible. And we get into metaphysics, which means beyond the physical rules and realm. In fact, I have a few seats left for that course in Sedona about a week and a half from now. And I'm also offering it in Ohio near Akron. I actually in... signed up. You signed up. Yay. Okay. Well, yeah. if you want the course, if you want it in advance online, it's my gift to you. But otherwise, it's, it would be really fun to have it in person. But yes, I'll yeah. definitely see you in Ohio. Okay. So there was another aspect of that. Let me ask my guides what we were just supposed to address with that. Oh, simply that if we are this source of all awareness, pure awareness itself, the light, it can't be harmed if it is the source of everything. So what happens to us here in our awareness? Absolutely. I am not denying we experience harm and pain and pleasure but ultimately at our deeper level, because we're not only human, we can't be hurt. We do not die. We agreed to come into this experience. And sometimes we say, what was I thinking? And why do other people go through that? But the beautiful thing about living the awakened way, you can go to theawakenedway.org and find out what that's all about. It was part of today's Daily Way message, in fact, is coming to know you're not only human. So clearly, Vinci, you're well on the path to understanding that, but I would take a look at, is your understanding of God limiting your understanding of yourself? Okay? Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for calling in, and I, I look forward to, to hearing how you just uh, grow with this. Okay? Yes, thank you. All right. Bye-bye. And our next caller, these are just, this is awesome. I love talking with all of you about these things. And please understand, I can only share with you from my latest understanding and connecting with the guides and whatever doesn't sit well with you, that's okay. We're all changing and growing. People attend my classes and then they come back and take them again a year later. I had one lady say, boy, this class really changed since you taught it last and I looked at her and I said, the syllabus came from my guides. I haven't changed a word of it since it came to me. And she looked at me kind of aghast and she said, well, then I guess I've changed. Yeah. And that's what it's all about, right? Growing, learning, evolving. That's why we came here. Learning to shine more and feel more of that connection. Christy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm actually, I'm super excited that you're able to answer my question. Here it is. Um, I'm wondering, my 43-year-old brother died of COVID um, a little over a year ago. And I guess I, I've listened to a lot of your podcasts, but I, I haven't heard the answer to this question. How will I experience him when I finally get to see him again? Will I be able to hug him? Or is it just kind of a communion of spirits? That, that's because I really miss him and I just want to hug him. I just, I just, it, this, we're videotaping this, so it'll be on YouTube later, but I, you just gave me this beautiful burst of joy that just overcame me as you asked that, and that's what you'll experience. And sometimes, depending on a person's understanding of the afterlife, when you cross, you'll recognize each other face to face as you were in the human body. And other times, you'll just be these beautiful beings of light and you'll recognize each other as the light. I was just talking about Eben Alexander, the doctor who wrote um, Proof of Heaven, and he recognized his sister as a beautiful butterfly. Yet it's going to be different for each of us, but it will be so blissful and instant awareness. Oh my gosh, you've never left me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for that beautiful question, which I hope, many listening find reassuring as well. These are not just platitudes, everybody. As an evidence-based medium, it's the irrefutable evidence, things I couldn't have known. They come through in every reading, along with the feeling, the presence of those who have passed that lets me know this is very, very real. We really don't die. We just go to another chapter of our lives. 
in a realm that interpenetrates our own. It's right here, just like a different channel though, different frequency, and we can learn to attune to that frequency. The reason we don't is because most of the time when we're not attuned, we're focused so much on this frequency and that's the way it's supposed to be. We came here for this experience, but because we're souls, we can absolutely learn to change the channel. All right, Katie, thank you for your patience. You made it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I, uh... Uh-oh. We dropped her after all that time. So I'll tell you what, Katie, you call back and I'll take your call. If Jeff can uh, screen the call in the next few minutes. Okay, uh, let me see. Uh, Lynette has, I'm gonna go on the line here for a second. I see Lynette on there asking some question. I think Lynette's my assistant. Do you have a question for me, Lynette? <laughs> Lynette is your assistant. <laughs> <laughs> but the <laughs> type is so small, you have a question and I can't read it. So you might as well say hi to everybody. They all know you. Well, I will. Hello, everybody. I have a question from someone who wrote in oh. and I wanted to read it because she wasn't able to call in. Okay, but let me just tell Katie to call back because hopefully I'll get to her because yes. she, she waited all that time. What's the question, Lynette? Okay, there's a preamble. It's short. My understanding at this point is that each person on the planet brings a unique point of view to the eternal and infinite consciousness that we are all a part of, like your disco ball analogy. My question, this is from Lucy of, uh, in Quebec. Would it be fair to say that in the process itself of looking for it, we are contributing to raise the light of the whole humanity? And then she has a second part, if you answer that one. In the process of looking for what? I'm looking for this eternal, infinite consciousness that we're all a part of. Oh my gosh. I mean, that's what this is all about. That's what this show is about. That's what all of you listening and watching this show is all about, raising consciousness. Can't you feel the love just bursting through in this show? Just by going to the soul and asking these questions, we raise our individual consciousness. By coming together as a group for things like this, for this show, we create a field of beings who are holding sacred space for the rest of humanity. Not that we're better, just that we're focused on learning. Is there more coming to know there's more shining our lights more brightly and the spirits say, we see you. So yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. That's great. And I think, I mean, why are you giggling just because that's what you do? <laughs> No, I just think it's such a wonderful, I love the question. I love the answer. No, so, so then she asked that as we stumble around and lose our way at being human, you know, we're not doing things perfectly. Are we still continuing to contribute this light? Are we paving the way for an energetic improvement for the entire universe, even when we're stumbling and fumbling around? Well, stumbling and fumbling does not contribute, but it's a natural response to waking up. You get out of, oh, that's a good one. The guides are saying you get out of bed in the morning and you have a goal to go do something and you may stumble because you're still sleepy as, and it doesn't help you get towards your goal, but you have to go through the stumbling. So it's a natural part of the journey. So just keep that intention. I'm working on awakening and to my true nature, to shining my light more brightly. I may stumble in the choices that I make, but I'm going to stay on track no matter how off track I may get from time to time. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you for that. I'm not putting your name on the list, Lynette. No, please don't. I've taken them all. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Bye. All right. Great. Line three is next. Well, do I have time? I do. And I just don't see Katie. So Katie, Oh, I'm so sorry I didn't get to your question. Oh, well. Let's see. Oh, well, the guide said that sounded a little bit uncaring, and I did not mean that at all. Let's see how we're going to help Katie. Katie, send your, your email, your, send by email your question to Bev through my website. She'll get it to me, and I will answer it offline. Okay? All right. 
So we have two minutes for Bernie. Bernie, you're on the air. Can you be succinct? Hi, Suzanne. This is Bernie. Um, I called him before. I read all your books. Yeah, I just want one question. Have you ever turned Wolf's Message, uh, the front cover, looked at it from the top, like upside down? From the left aspect, you can see a face standing next to the tree in the light portion. I have done that because somebody emailed me and said the same thing. Was that you? Yeah, that's probably me. <laughs> okay, I did. And I see what you're talking about. So anybody who has a copy of Wolf's Message, you might want to try that. It's it's pretty cool how we see things when yeah, we... Yeah, you know, I first met Maureen Hancock early on. I became a spiritualist in like 2010. Okay. And like, so I, I've been doing all kinds of classes. And like you, I've been getting full names, numbers. I table tip and my table counts by a system of tens and ones. And it's just been fantastic. Because I, I, like you, are evidence-based. My parents were into this. And I wanted na names and, you know, just the facts, man. Nothing but the facts. You know what yeah, I'm I understand that. Yeah. And I love Ty. I love Ty's blog, too. I read it yesterday. It was great. Oh, thank you, everybody. Check out lifeastysitcom You will see uh, some of his adventures, and you'll see why I was in the doghouse, literally. Uh, it's a great blog, great photos. I don't know why my alarm didn't go off, Bernie, but I see that it's time for me to draw to make a drawing. Thank you for calling. Okay, got to put you on Thank hold you. for a second and take care of business here. We have the drawing for somebody who's going to win a course. I love to thank you all for calling in. So I'm not looking. My dog isn't here to choose the one for me today. So here's the winner. He's saying that one. Guys say that one right on top now. Deb. You win the prize. So you may also reach out to Bev, who's going to get a flood of emails from this show today and take your choice of one of my uh, online courses. I just have so enjoyed our time together here. I hope you have learned something. I hope it's given you reason to question some things. If we're not questioning, we're not growing. I love you all. Thank you for joining me. We have some great guests coming up the rest of the month. So please come back and join us again. In the meantime, be well.